Hello humans, Master Dinnerflex here, and today I'll be going over something I haven't gone over in many months. It's the return of the Retired Deck Profile. Now, if you don't know what Retired Deck Profiles are, they're uh, deck profiles of mine, my friends, or just people in general mass playing a hype deck. And it either never took off due to it just not being good enough, or like it got hit indirectly or directly and it never got the chance to take off. Um, so, like, most of the time, they're usually just my decks that have been hit to a point where you just can't play them anymore. And this one wasn't hit that way, it just Master Rule 4, and you'll see when I explain it. So, this deck was known as Chocolate XYZ, and the concept was really simple. You are using water spellcasters and Gigabyte and all kinds of generic water to support to make Bahamut Shark to make totally awesome. Now, uh, with, when totally awesome was announced, Invasion Vengeance had some pretty insane cards in it. It had full force fires, dimensional uh, barrier, uh, totally awesome, just a bunch of amazing cards. And then... We, we also got the movie pack, which gave us Chocolate Magician Girl, which, uh... Once per turn, it's a little Destiny draw. You get to discard a Spellcaster to draw a card. But much bigger is that you cannot... Your opponent actually just can't attack this. Because if they attempt to attack it, uh, it revives a Spellcaster out of your graveyard. And then they attack that, and then the monster they're attacking with stats are halved. So, like, if they want to attack over a Trick Clown, they have to have over 3,200 attack as a monster just to beat over it. And that's just insane. So, literally, she's unattackable. Um, or realistically unattackable. And she's also a water, and she also digs into your deck. Next, so, like, all these support cards are telling you rank 4 is getting ready to become the place to be. So, it's like... Waters, just throw a bunch of waters in here. Perform ages, blah, puke out all your rank fours, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get into this. Triple Chocolate Magician Girl, uh, named Chocolate XYZ, um, just insane. The card, uh, actually, this is like one of my favorite made cards of all time, just because it's like, it's so good, but it's like. It's, like, just a good generic card, but even though it, like, has no real applications in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just so good and so generic that I just like it. It's pretty cool. Then we got Triple Gigabyte. If you control a spellcaster, you can special summon it. It's searchable through Feral Limps, and it also, uh, is a water, so just so much synergy with the deck. Triple Trick Clown. Not because you want to draw it, but because you want to draw it with um, Magician Girl, Chocolate. Because you pitch it, draw one, and you have a rank 4. And uh, just in of itself, you got Wander Wands. You got a lot of cards in here that just let you make a rank 4 and just draw you some cards. So this card is actually just okay to draw. Uh, it's 2 Summoner Monk because it's a good spellcaster and it pitches like you... Because you can only use Brilliant Fusion and Instant Fusion once. So, like, you're pitching extra copies or dead copies of those to make a rank 4. And we got double hat tricker because it's a rank 4 spam deck. And, uh, once you get two level 4s, once you have three level 4s and one of them is a spellcaster, you're pretty much in the clear because you can make King of the Feral Limps and immediately make another one. Now for the vanillas, we got triple aquamador. Um, it is a water... Spellcaster normal monster that you can summon off of Unexpected Die and Rabbit. That's literally the only application it has. It's also got a really fat ass, um, too. So, yeah, I guess if you really, really brick, you can do that. Now, uh, Rescue Rabbit, it's self-explanatory with this. But Garnet, so this could either be Garnet or Lazuli. But the problem with Lazuli is she's less usable than Garnet in a rank 4 deck. And, uh, you're grabbing back a normal monster you probably can't summon that turn. I mean, you probably could, but it's like, oh boy, that's awful. You're making your Garnet even worse by making it level 1, so just 
stick with Garnet. Uh, that's that was my theory behind it. And now this one is also a Garnet, but not really because as long as you draw a reptile at any point in the game, you can use this. And it's Evil Dragon Ananta, and uh, it's kind of like Mega Rock Dragon, where you just banish all reptiles on the field and in the graveyard. But then it gains 600 attack for attack and defense for each. So usually, if you're playing it smart, you're only banishing one or two, so it won't be very big. But each of your end phases, you pop a card on the field mandatorily. So you don't want to summon this turn one, but it's really, really good uh, later games because this deck isn't actually that fast. Um, so you just summon this and end phase... They're going to be setting all your stuff. You're going to be setting your opponent's stuff because, uh, totally awesome. It's just going to really brick them. So you can, like, capitalize on how little they're playing and just pop it and force them to make a play to use your Toad to the best of its abilities. So, yeah. Really, really good. And then 2 Maxi. This is a time where it was starting to not pee at 3 anymore. Uh, Triple Brilliant Fusion. Triple Instant Fusion. This was before, uh... This was before the Preda plant, so we actually just couldn't search these, so you had to hard draw them, which is what Chocolate and Wonder Woman help do. Help do, of course. Double Cosmic. Uh, this card is... Uh, it's alright. Uh, it, it's kind of weird, because uh, it came out in the set before, and Metal Foes were really good, but Twin Twister was also really good, so it's hard to know which one was better. But uh, this one, you don't have to pitch... It's it's weird. I I don't even remember why I like this one over Twin Twister in the main. I don't know. Uh, I'll go ask past self later. Um, and then Double Wonder Wand. The Spellbook card wasn't legal yet. Um, but draw two cards. Always helpful. Especially if you're doing it on a not used uh, Trick Clown. That's very powerful. And then two Unexpected Die to summon the Mod Ores out of your deck. Uh, and one Soul Charge and one Upstart Goblin. For the traps, triple strike, one warning, and one treacherous. So that's really good. Um, treacherous, obviously, for Reflasia. And the strikes, just extra stuff to draw with your toad, plays. And for the extra deck, we got Dweller. Since you have so many waters, you actually do boost it up. So that's really fun. You can uh, end with Dweller, Bahamut, Tree Toad, and they all get a boost. So that's really, really cool. Digusto Emerald, you actually have Vanillas in here to revive, so that's really cool. And you just get to recycle back extra deck monsters. Uh, one Castell, because it was still relevant at the time. One King of the Feral Imp, so this one was probably the most powerful non-stunny rank 4. This was the most proactive rank 4. Uh, second best is Digusto. And what you do with this is pretty simple. You just detach materials, search any reptile in the game, like... Uh, Anata or Antenda, I can't remember how you pronounce that shit. Um, and then, uh, so I'll go over some plays after this. But then you got Diamond Dyer because Tornado Dragon wasn't out yet. A uh, small Utopia package. Uh, Trapeze Magician because you play Perform Ages. Uh, Reflasia. Double Bahamut. Double Toad. Uh, one Seraphonite. And then one Norden. And the side deck, two Kaijus. Three Twin Twister, so the uh, Turtle Kaiju, because of the fact that you can recycle it back with Toad. Uh, two System Down for Cosmo, because people were... Fire King Cosmo was a thing. Raijiki. Uh, triple Dimensional Barrier, because... Uh, so, from what I remember, I think Dimensional Barrier, people weren't on it yet. They were like, this is a really good side deck card. But then, as ABCs came into the game... Like, this was way too important. You actually really needed this. Um, but I don't know. Now, Triple Four Force, this came out in the same set as Toad. And uh, what you could do with this is after you make your King of the Feral Imp play and you have this set, you just ravage their hand and they don't get to play. And this was before people realized, oh, wait a minute, you can just play Frogs and they can make Toad. And that, I honestly find that really funny, that Bahamut Shark... People thought, oh, you're not actually making Toad the normal way. You're just using Bahamut Shark. And then we caught on to wait. Oh, making it the normal way is actually easier. So that's pretty funny. 
And then uh, one bottomless for the extra trap hole in the side because I don't fucking know. Yay. So, I'm going to go over a few plays. So, if you have Rescue Rabbit and Jigabyte in hand, you banish Rescue Rabbit, summon two of these, summon a Jigabyte, turn one of the Aqua Mordors and the Jigabyte into King of the Feral Lamps. Feral Lamps, go ahead and uh, search another Jigabyte. Jigabyte special summon because you have the other Aqua Mordor. And then you turn that into Bahamut and then into Totally Awesome. So you made an extra rank 4 that could search uh, Evil Dragon or another Jigabyte next turn depending on which is better. And if you drew this game 2 and you drew full force then you're just... You're winning! Yay! Um, uh, just like combinations of Jigabyte, Hat Tricker, uh, Chocolate with perf uh, Trick Clown. Just all these different like... There's all these different amalgamations of hands that you can, like, get that get you there. But all that really matters is you need to put a rank 4 on board that doesn't let your opponent play. And that's what Yu-Gi-Oh! is all about, not letting your opponent play. So, yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have any requests for any forgotten decks, just let me know. So, yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching, and remember, Master Dinnerflax will take your soul.